following show is paid program and does not necessarily express the views and opinions of Urban Broadcast Media and its subsidiaries. Thank you for listening to UBM Praise. Let's go. A Sir Walter Jones. Who is it? A Sir Walter Jones. What's his name? A Sir Walter Jones. Who show is this? A Sir Walter Jones. Who is it? A Sir Walter Jones. Say it again. A Sir Walter Jones. Who are you with? A Sir Walter Jones. One more again. A Sir Walter Jones. The Sir Walter Jones Show. Co-host Alvin Carter. We are a Christian talk show in where we tackle all the hot topics in a believer's walk. A Sir Walter Jones. Who is it? A Sir Walter Jones. What's his name? A Sir Walter Jones. Who show is this? A Sir Walter Jones. Who is it? A Sir Walter Jones. Say it again. Proverbs 18 and 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and is safe. Got a question about scriptures? Well, we got the answers. Just ask the elders. It's Theology Thursday, right here on the Sir Walter Jones Show. Everybody, it's so all the so all the Jones show. It is Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. Theology Thursday. It's a family affair. Yeah, we talking about Abraham, Isaac, and that boy Jacob. Mm-hmm. You think your family is jacked up? No, man. No. I'm trying to tell y'all. Go into scriptures. Abraham had a blessed seed. God said he's going to bless the seed like he would the. He said, look at the sand. Look at the stars. Man, that's where your seed going to be. Just vast and blessed. But his family, uh, their elevator didn't go up to the third floor. Yeah, many of them was uh, dealing with manic depression. And and uh, they were dealing with uh, being uh, pimps and hoes. <laughs> and <the> Jezebels. <laughs> they played the harlot. You name it. So you think your family jacked up? Mm-mm. Check this show out. You're going to realize the bipolarness in Abraham's family. Yeah, y'all chiming in here on Facebook. Thank you, Brony Scott. Saying, I promise I thought my grandmother was crazy for marrying her first cousin and having kids by him. But when I found out that Moses' mother and father were actually aunt and nephew, I didn't feel so bad, <laughs> she's saying. Angela, Garrett is saying it could be a case of generational curses and, ble- uh, and blessings. We normally keep doing the same thing until the chains are broken. Amen to that. I hate the like button, Angela. Love you, Angela, by the way. Say you love me. Tell me you love me. Tell me. Uh, let's see. Brenda also says, I will still say that Lot's daughters were the worst <laughs> of all Bible history. <laughs> Been like that, too. See, I'm just not reading these for the first time. I didn't get a chance to read them because I was driving. And I, don't, I ain't like y'all. I don't text and drive. I stop at the light. <laughs> it didn't text. No. Uh, Tommy Haygood. Says, I think that rape and incest spirit being around for a while, uh, but it cost King David de- dearly because of his actions. His son raped his sister, Tamar, and then ended up dead at his brother's hands. Sad, 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 but bad. And bad, he's saying. Uh, Abbas Nana, well, there's nothing new under the sun, she's saying here. Mm-hmm. Sharonda Ware says, this is uh, going to be good. I'm tuning in. Well, I hope you are. Oh, all right, Angela. I love you too, girl. She responded. Oh, shit, man. I said, I was no, it wasn't for you. That's why you ain't see it. It wasn't for you. It was for me. She sent it in the inbox. What, what Angela has for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Brother Scott says now that bipolar situation, uh, I believe Saul kicked that off. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I feel you on that. She also says, my son once said that Abraham didn't follow instructions because God told him to take only his wife. And God never told him to take Lot. Uh, I question that. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we're going to go there, Elder Ryder Jones. <laughs> uh, Melissa uh, Melissa Green says, the funny thing is we didn't pick them. God put us together. <laughs> LOL. Uh, and in the Virginia... Virginia Freeland says, am I thy brother's keeper? Uh, yes. 
Yes, you are, by the way. Mm, no, you didn't hear what yeah. she said. Well, she said, am I? Thy brother, not my brother. Oh, oh okay. Okay. <laughs> That's why your eyes are better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> For your eyes only. <laughs> how you doing, brother? I'm all right. How about yourself? Yeah, well, you know, I've had some good days. <laughs> yeah, I know. Speaking of which, why would you complain if all your good days outweighed your bad days? You know days? what I'm saying? You know? And then that's if you've seen the song right, because I have heard the song the other oh, way. Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> Especially at funerals. Yeah. My, my bad days. Yeah. I'll wait my good days. And then I was having a bad day when they got up and started singing. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. As soon as they walked to the mic, I said, bad day. You know you know how you can tell when the song is going to not really, really go good? How's that? How they start out. It's what? I've had some good days and something. Mm-hmm. I've had some bad days. When you sing yep. it that way, oh, you true. know we're we going to have a we, situation. We're going to really have a bad service. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be really bad. <laughs> well, I hope the show ain't, won't be bad, Elder Roddy Jones. Yes, sir, boss. Yeah, so we're going to Abraham's story here, all right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to go to Wiki, 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 Wikipedia, mm-hmm. okay? You know, they never lie. Yeah, <laughs> they're right, the, right, They're right. the God of the Internet. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and uh, all of the... Um, all of the uh, Google uh, students out there. Right. Uh, this is the Abraham family tree. The family tree of the, uh, of the biblical figure Abraham is connected by several stories. I thought Abraham's forefathers were from southern Mesopotamia. Mm-hmm. Uh, mess. Okay. In present day, <laughs> Iraq, by the way. That's what we're fighting, y'all. That's Mesopotamia. Mm-hmm. That's Iraq. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, over there near Turkey, by the way. Okay. I have a few friends that are. Turkeys, and, turkeys. and according to biblical tradition, the Lord led Abraham on a journey to the land of Canaan, mm-hmm. which is for, uh, prom- which he promised to his uh, descendants. He is known as the patriarch of the Jewish people mm-hmm. of uh, through Isaac, uh-huh. the, the son born to him, and Sarah in their old age. And Abraham is also known as the patriarch of Islam. Mm-hmm. Through his son Ishmael, Ishmael, uh-huh, born to Abraham and his wife's servant Hagar. Mm-hmm. All right, so Abraham really is the father of three people, three right. type, because there's three popular uh, right. religions, religions of the world. Uh-huh. So we have what Christianity, Christianity, Christ. Uh huh. We have mm-hmm. Islam, Islam, and then we Ishmael. have uh, uh, Jude, uh, Judaism, uh, Judaism, Judaism. Okay, which is uh, which is them, Isaac. Yeah. yeah. All right, or the Hebrews. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. All right, because some like to be called Hebrews, and some say, I'll, I'll be a Jew. Mm. And we know Jew comes from uh, Judah, all right? And we, we have to see where Abraham's lineage comes from. So, right now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read here and see what we can find out. Okay. This is Genesis 11 is, is where the story kicks off. Kicks off. He apparently must be from Shem. Okay. Shem is one of Noah's boys. Mm-hmm. Shem, Ham, and Jacob is his name. His brother. Was. All right. So, verse 10 says, these are the generations of Shem. Shem was 100 years old and begat Arphax, uh, Arphax, there it is. <laughs> they, that's, he invented the fax machine, by the way. Uh, two years after the flood. What chapter you in? Chapter 11. Oh, okay. Verse 11, and, and Shem lived after he begat our, the guy who faxed mm-hmm. uh, uh, 500 years. This, wow. They lived a long time, bro. Yes, sir. And we got some daughters. And then the, the fact guy lived five and 30 years and we got uh, Selah. And then the fact guy keeps popping up. I, can, I wish they'd move on with him. <laughs> lived after he begot Selah for uh, 403 years and wow. begot sons and daughters. Man. You, if, if you're noticing, mm-hmm. after the 400 and some years, yep. they start having more and children. I mean, there's something. Yeah. 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 Uh, so you women who are trying to have babies at 50, it's possible. It's possible, very possible. It's, it really is possible. Matter of fact, try it tonight. Try it. Why don't you try it? You have to have that one song, Turn Off the Light. Turn Off the Light yes. and light your candle. Yes. Turn on some Anita Baker, too. Mm. And if it don't happen, just turn on her song that says, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. It, make sure it's your husband, by the way. Yes. Uh, 14, uh, and Selah lived 30 years and begat uh, Eber. And Selah lived after uh, lived after he begat Eb- Eber, okay, 403 mm-hmm. years and begat sons and daughters. Wow. Now, this goes on and on. Mm-hmm. When we get towards the bottom, which is thir- 25, let's go to 24, and Nahor lived 9 and 20 years mm-hmm. and begat Terah. Mm-hmm. And uh, Nahor lived after he begot 
Terah and hundred and nineteen years and begat sons and daughters. Hmm. Now this seems like the uh, after a while the years started going, meaning up and down. Yeah, uh, and then and Terah lived seventy years. You see how? Mm-hmm. See what's happening here? And begat Abram, mm-hmm. Nahor, and Haran. Yes. Okay, there's three of them. Okay, now these are the generations of Terah. Terah begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran begat Lot. Here's that guy. That's him. That's where we now know that's the uncle. Yes, sir. Okay. So I had to bring this up. And Haram died before his father, Terah, in the land of uh, his nativity in Ur of the Chaldees. Okay. Now, Elder Rodney Jones, mm-hmm. are they Jews yet? No. They're not Jews yet? They're not Jews. Okay. What would you consider them to be right now? Because um, are they just two groups of people on Earth? Uh, Jew well, and Gentile? Uh, uh, um, yeah, no, no, no. There wasn't there were nothing at that moment mm-hmm. unless they were Chaldeans or mm-hmm. or whatever the, their nativity were. Where was that? We read it. Uh, well, I just in read verse it. 28. Uh-huh. It said of his nativity uh, mm-hmm. in Ur yeah. of Chaldeans. Yeah, they, sure. they were Chaldeans. Mm-hmm. That's what they were. Okay. So they were not called Jews or Hebrews or nothing like that at mm-hmm. that moment. Okay, all right. And Abraham and Nahor took Ab- them. Abram. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. <coughs> I had some had some ham. Right, that right. Is. It's some still good it's still in my shadow. <laughs> and Ab- and Abram and no- Nahor uh, mm-hmm. took them wives. Took them. He took them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The name of Abram's wife was Sarah, and the name of Nahor's wife Milcah. So Abram and Nahor are who brothers? Ah, uh-huh. ah. Uh-huh. The daughter of Haran. That's there. Yeah. Okay, yes. the father of Milka and the father of uh, Iska. Now, can you back up? I can. She is <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> is the daughter of who? All right. So, so, now it says here his wife Sarah and and the the the, the name of well, it's the name the name of Nahor's wife is Milka, the daughter of Haran, mm-hmm. the father and the father. Okay, it's not. But Sarah was barren. So so right here, I'm I'm trying to figure out here mm-hmm. where's Sarah's family. Okay, yeah, go right. back to nine. And Abram and Nahor took them wives. Mm-hmm. And the name of Abram's wife was Sarah. Mm-hmm. That's it. Okay. All right. Uh, and then uh, 30 says, but Sarah was barren. And so it didn't go into her genealogy per se. Uh, she had no, ch- no child. And Terah took Abram, his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, his son's son, mm-hmm. and Sarah, his daughter-in-law, his son, Abram's wife. And they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. And they came into Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Terah were 205 years and Terah died in Haran. Hmm. Okay. So that sets us up. Mm-hmm. Why Lot is with Abram. Abram. Yes. Because now it appears that Abram would be the head man. Mm-hmm. So he's now taking Lot as his own son. Yes. Because Lot's father is dead. Yes. They're not like us. They they have responsibilities. And most likely there were, I don't want to call it rituals, but cultural things that they would do at that time. We do pick up some of those particular cultures. But before we can judge some matters, we have to look at what their culture is. Yep, yep. You know. Yeah. yeah. We do know later on that God would tell Israel if a man died and didn't have any children, if he had brothers, then the next brother would marry his wife, and then when they had a child, he would name him after the the man who died. So we do know that culture that God instituted. That's true. But we don't know what some of the culture of Abram and his wife was at that time. That's so true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you you own something there. Mm-hmm. Okay. I try, I try to. Be. Yeah. Yeah. Because twelve says here. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, get thee out thy country Mm -hmm. and from thy kindred and from thy father's house into a land that I will show thee. Uh, And I will make thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse thee. That Did he change his mind on any of this stuff? No. He has not. No. And it's very interesting because a lot of people say that God called Abram. In the 12th chapter of Genesis. Right. But he didn't call him in the 12th chapter. Mm-hmm. Because if you look at the first verse, it says, Now the Lord had said, mm-hmm. which is past tense. Yes. 
So if we look at that, then we understand that God did not just call Abram in this 12th chapter. Right. He called him before we get to the 12th chapter. I see. And then because that will really give us bearings on what we're trying to find out. And then if you go to, what is it, Acts 7th chapter, something when you deal with Stephen. Mm -hmm. Stephen, before they stoned him, talks about when God called Abram. And where Abram was. Sure did. Sure did. And so he kind of explains and gives us a better understanding. So this 12th chapter in the first verse is not when God called Abram. Okay. This because he said, now the Lord had said, which means prior to this moment. Okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. If you know English, that makes sense. Yes. Not only that, but he said, I will bless them that bless you. Yes. And I will curse them that curse you. It is said, whoever did not help Abraham. Right. It was equivalent to them cursing Abraham. That's so true. Yes. That's why I asked you the question. Uh, did he change manners? And, and is that does that still apply today? That still apply today. Now, this is some new, this is some information we try to take. Right. He said, well, remember the Bible said he'll bless him. Bless. No, he <coughs> told that to Abram. He did. It. Because he chose Abram. And I believe he called Abram his friend. He did. So he wouldn't do nothing without telling his friend Abram That's about true. it or his That's friend true. Abraham. That's true. So God is saying, even till today, if we back off and let somebody destroy Abram, mm -hmm. then we are cursed because he said, I will curse them. If you reference that curse them, that curse you, it is those who refuse to help you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to curse them. Oh, boy. Well, that makes us, that makes a lot of sense there. Mm -hmm. And we uh, will see that reference later on in, in the book. Mm -hmm. uh, and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. And there's something there. Yes, sir. <coughs> then he says, as I cough. Yes. So Abram departed as the Lord has spoken unto him and Lot went with him. Mm -hmm. That's a problem, isn't it? No. Not yet. No. And Abram was 70 and five years old when he departed out of Haran. Because he's supposed to, uh, he's supposed to look after his, uh, his family, don't his, he? His family. And his okay. son, Lot, would be his son. Yeah. Later, uh -huh. we would really find out why he took Lot with him. Why he took Lot. All right. Mm -hmm. So you're a proponent of he should have taken Lot. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're one rare man, by the way. Yes, sir. I'm, I stand by myself. Yeah, you look dark like you've yes. been in the oven about 350. <laughs> it was 365. 365, my bad. But as for, for six me hours, and my house. Six, yes. And for you, <laughs> <laughs> y'all are darkies, right? <laughs> okay, five. And Abram took Sarah, his wife, mm -hmm. and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered and the souls that they had gotten in Haram, and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. Mm -hmm. Abram passed through the land into the place of uh, Sikkim until the pl uh, plain of Morah, Morah, and the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord uh, appeared unto Abram and said, Until thy seed will I give this land, and there there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. Yeah, and that's, that's unique. Very. Because Abram come from his father, Terah, yes. which history says Terah was an idol God maker. Mm -hmm. So Abram knew about building altars and worshiping a God. Uh oh. But here, Abram is building an altar and worshiping the Lord and true and living God. Right. Not only that, but if you look at the word Lord, mm -hmm. how it's spelled, yep. it's all capital. capital. Yeah. Not just the capital L in lowercase, but it's all capital, yep. which means the I am that I am, or it is the mm -hmm. self-existent one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and, I, and, and the Bible is so wise. I love it. He places every word in every spot and in every detail. Yes. So right now, Mo, uh, Aaron, what's the guy's name? Hmm. That, uh, well, yeah, well, Abram. Yeah, yeah, they got it. <laughs> Abram, he, mm -hmm. he is now dealing with the self-existent God. Yeah. Wow. That's good stuff, and I'm glad that the King James writers were able to pick that up, though. Yes, yes. Because you know, if they didn't do it, then we we wouldn't have we this. Would, yeah, we'd be reading the NIV. Yeah, we would right, we'd be reading that, that blasphemous uh, <laughs> <laughs> that thing keeps changing with with, with time. The time. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, from Haran from Haran to Sh uh, Shechem was 400 mile journey. They're saying here mm. now that's far even in a car. Yes, it is. But these guys are on feet, uh, and feet on mule, and, uh, camels, uh, camels and horse. Yeah. And then she, good Lord, that's that's children as well, you know, yeah. women and children, uh, in sandals. 
Oh, they were no yeah. Jordans. Oh, no, no. <laughs> if they had Jordans back then, you mean, can you imagine how many times they had to squeeze it, that air thing? <laughs> <laughs> yep. That'll take me about 100 miles right there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the eight says, and he removed from hence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent, mm-hmm. having Bethel on the west and Hai on the east. And there he built an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. Mm. Oh, boy. And Abram jur- uh, uh, journeyed going on still towards the south. And there was a famine in the land. Mm-hmm. And Abram went down into Egypt to Egypt. sojourn there. There it is. There, there, it, is. there it is. This is how we get to uh-oh, Egypt. Uh oh, uh oh. It's something about Egypt yep. being planted there mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for the wealth of the wicked yes, sir. is laid up for the yes, just. Yes, sir. And the 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 saints of God mm-hmm. always went to mm-hmm. Egypt. Always to get money. To get yep. To get money. Ain't and, that something? And everything else. Because it yeah, then it, that's so true. Because mm-hmm. this this Egypt pops up again in this man's children. Yes, it does. Right. It pops up even in Jesus' yes, time. Yes, it sure does. But Jesus didn't get, go there for money. No, no. And uh we look at Egypt as being in a corrupt evil thing of when Bible used Egypt, it always talk about something demonic, what have you. Exactly. But bondage eventually or sin. bondage. Yep, but God's mm-hmm. gonna save Egypt. Yes. Yep, that's what scripture says. Is he? Uh-huh. Yeah, wow. he's going to save Egypt. Uh, the sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. Mm-hmm. And it came to pass when he was come near to enter into Egypt that he said unto Sarah, his wife, Sarah still, uh, Behold, now I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. <laughs> <laughs> you were beautiful, girl. I know you're fair. That's why I met you. All is fair in love. <laughs> Therefore, it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee. Um, now, is, was he a prophet? He prophesied now. Because he said, therefore, it shall come to pass. Oh, it's coming. Because <laughs> when I saw you. Uh, <laughs> now, it's something he, he knew mm-hmm. the culture of where he was going. He did. He knew what kings had a right to do. Mm-hmm. The kings. And this is what's interesting because later down the line, Remember, Israel wanted a king, and God told him no. Yeah, what's wrong with me? They said they wanted one. He says, okay, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. The king is going to take your wives, Uh your children, your maid, your maidservant, your horses, your camels, your oxes, your mules, your asses, and everything. Yeah. The king was going to take it. All of it. But they said we still want him. We still want him. So it's something that Abraham would go somewhere, but then he already knew what their culture was. Mm -hmm. So now he's plotting with his wife. So that he can survive. Yeah. Take my wife, please. Yes. And take my ass. <laughs> um, therefore, it shall come to pass. Please. Please. When the Egyptians shall see thee, that they shall say, this is his wife. Mm-hmm. And they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say it, but I can't. Uh, 13. <laughs> Alvin will say it when he come in. Yes, he will. Uh, say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. All right, old Jones, you know the next question is? Oh, was he, did Abraham lie? Uh, you knew, you, how did you know that question was coming uh, up? You've been on this earth for at least five years, right? Uh, yeah, I got a little bit of that prophecy in <laughs> Was he lying, old Jones? We want uh, an answer. Well, you know what? Let's let's ask your Facebook audience. Yeah, let's do that. All, let's do that. See if Sarah was his wife. Right. Let's find out from Facebook. Yes, from okay. Facebook. Yeah. And let's see who the first one. Does the first one get a prize or a name mentioned on the air? Yes, they get a name mentioned. That's the prize. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yep. Yep. Because your no. name ain't on the book of Sir Walter Jones' <laughs> life. Now, didn't someone uh, else say the same thing? What? Say you're my sister. That's why I'm going. That's why I wanted to do this show. Uh-huh. Because it seems like there is a generational habit. Habit and or curse. Yeah. Back then, or curse. Or a ritual. Right. Now, back then, curse. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to do, because we did that show already about does God still curse today? Mm-hmm. All right. God curses. Right. Right. <laughs> Sit your. <laughs> Can you imagine God saying that? No, <laughs> I ain't in that. No, nope. I ain't, I ain't in, in that. that. Not in that. Uh, All right, because that's between you and a bro. Right, right. <laughs> All right, we did a show and we come to the conclusion that God does not curse today. Mm-hmm. Not the way we not, see here. No, of course. All right, Amen. because because He says that Christ. Well, what's the purpose of Him coming, being a mm-hmm. curse on the cross? If we still curse like we see here today, now we got what's called generational curses. Okay, mm-hmm. in our families, but is that generational curses or is that some purposeful thing that we do? 
because we seen our father do stuff and we and took lust on our own hearts and did it on our ourselves. You'd have to go to that show, y'all, because <laughs> that's right. a different show. Right. Uh, but we, we can mention it today, L. Jones, before the show is over. Mention what? Uh, about that generational Curse. thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see, because God did say in Scripture, I'll say this very quick, that he says, I will no more uh, punish you for the sins of your father. All right. Oh, yeah, I found it. You found what? <laughs> if they were related or not. Did any of oh. your Facebook chime in? Well, let's see. Let's see. Let's see, because I did find it. If uh, Abraham told the truth or not. Sarah was Abraham's sister. That's the Bernie says. And then Tommy says, no, that was just a lie he told <laughs> to try and save his sister. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's, that's all I got. That was right it. Now. All um, right. Let's go to uh, Ram, uh, the Bible. We believe the Bible? I believe it. Okay. Let them see. Angela says uh, she was his half sister, so he told a half lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he was a half saved. Half saved. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to Genesis twenty. Genesis and twenty, like ricochet. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brittany, I'm gonna talk through this uh, next half hour, baby, because I forgot to give you something for. Uh, so I ain't got nothing. Okay, twenty. What? Twenty now? and eleven. Okay, 20 and 11. Yes, mm-hmm. sir. And Abraham said, because uh-huh. I thought surely the fear of God is not in this place, and they will slay me for my wife's sake. Yes, Verse sir. Verse 12. Mm-hmm. And yet indeed she is my sister. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. She is the daughter of my father, Uh-oh. but not the daughter of my mother. Uh-oh. And she became my wife. Mm. So Sarah was what? his wife. Abram uh-huh. told the truth. Mm-mm. You mean sister? He's what? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah he, he, yeah, he, he told the truth. She is his sister. Mm-hmm. And 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 now people, some people can argue with me about this. I do believe that there are times when God allows certain things to come into play, so that at the at uh, certain situations, whenever you make a move, it's not a lie. Yes, you you understand what I'm I saying? I do do. I do do. You do. Okay, yeah. you admit it. That's a private uh, TMI. <laughs> yes. So uh, it's 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 like it, it was already going to happen. Mm-hmm. So God allowed certain things to take place in Abram's life. Yep. So when Abram made this step, Abram didn't lie. Now, right. some would say that he lied because he still didn't tell the full truth. Yeah, but those same people will go and sit in the public aid office and they ask him a question, and you are not going to tell them the whole truth. Yep. But you will say you didn't lie. Yep. Yep. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Uh, so, you know. You know, so, we, yeah, you're right. We always judge people like this. We judge okay. people, but we do the exact same thing. The man comes to the house, whoever it is you don't want to see, and you tell your children, mm-hmm. tell them I ain't here. Tell them I ain't here. And yeah. any smart child would say my daddy told me to tell you he's not he here. Ain't here he's sitting over in the closet <laughs> waiting for you to leave <laughs> okay okay, oh, okay. Is, is, how did i do that <laughs> <laughs> all right then <laughs> that's good you, you found you found, I found, the I, found I mean this, we're, we're a bible-based church yes we uh, are or radio station yeah well, we are radio right. station. Or, or app. when we leave here yes i'm not sure where so you we, going. we got to read it so i mean so the question still what did Abraham or Abram use a tactic of survival? Yes, he did. He yes. had to. And I believe he was led by the Lord to do that. Exactly. Yeah. Look at Paul. Look at him. Paul, <laughs> when he was in trouble, and the Bible said when he knew mm-hmm. that there were Pharisees and Sadducees. Yes. They were about to kill Paul. They were. Paul threw out uh, being born again, being born from the dead, or resurrection. He did. He threw that on the floor, mm-hmm. and he knew that one is either the Pharisee or the Sadducees didn't believe in resurrection, mm-hmm. and the other one did. Sadducees don't believe it. Exactly. So mm-hmm. Paul threw that out there, and now the two were fighting against one another, and Paul was able to escape that whole sure, thing. That's so true. He got himself out of this a couple of times. Yes. Be even by saying that he had dual citizenship. Yes, mm-hmm. and, and he did. He did. And and I, and that's another act of God. Sure he was a Jew, uh-huh. but he was born in Rome. It hints to both names. Exactly. Sure. And the Ma- God didn't change the name. Matter of fact, God told uh, Samuel mm-hmm. to go anoint, I don't know if it was David or somebody king. Mm-hmm. Samuel. So Samuel said, well, Lord, it's not, if I go there, the people are going to know, want to know, what am I doing here? Mm-hmm. He says, 
I only come at a certain time of the year, right. and it's not that time of the year for me to come. God says, take sacrifice with you, yeah. and then go make a sacrifice. Yep. Then from there, go do what I told you to do. Yeah, that's to- so I asked the question, did God plot up for this man to tell a lie yeah. or what? Yeah, boy, I tell you. You, but, you know, I think you posed a question a couple of weeks ago. We, every week you kind of pose this question mm-hmm. um, indirectly by how God uses the culture of man. Yes, yes, yes. To do things. Mm-hmm. And then this is where atheists and un- unbelievers hate mm-hmm. about God. Because mm-hmm. they don't really hate you. Right. They, right. Care, they don't care much, they, nothing they about you. They hate my kids. Yeah, they, they hate your kids. Yeah, they do, uh-huh. they do, they do. Because your kids are all traveling around they, the world. They, they right, jealous of your kids, which is really what it is. <laughs> Okay, but they hate God right. because what their what their defense is always is why can't God just at the at the finger just exactly. wipe this out yeah. and move that mountain for a man to let him do this right. give him the kingdom give him this mm-hmm. why take him through all this why did he have to this man got to prepare a sacrifice mm-hmm. and do all this stuff to get to the land and then still be rejected in some points and then God uh, use something else why God have to use all these ten plagues and all this stuff mm-hmm. okay why, matter of fact. That's my question to you. Why does he take man through this? He takes man through things to show man him. Mm-hmm. And when man comes out of it, man knows God. He know. He know. He and know that it was God. The person that he that God used knows it uh-huh. more so. Is, and, and he said, "I'm gonna get honor. Uh-huh. I'm gonna get me honor upon Pharaoh. Yeah. And all Egypt is gonna know that I'm God. Right. And when God got through whooping up on Pharaoh and that army. Right. But the Bible said when Pharaoh was, per- matter of fact, God is so smart. I love him. He told Moses, turn around and go the other direction. Yeah, he did. And you're going to get caught up where you won't be able to escape. He says, and Pharaoh himself going to say, ah, ha, ha, ha. Got you. So that they may know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> where is your Moses now? Where is your Moses now? <laughs> so that they may know. So let it be written. So let it be done. <laughs> he said, Pharaoh is going to say, they trapped. Yeah. And the Bible said Pharaoh said it and then Pharaoh got on his horse himself rather than sending the army. Pharaoh led the army. That's true. And the Bible said that Pharaoh's army went into the sea mm-hmm. and it was driving after the Israelites very hard, the Bible said. Right. And the Bible said God took the wheels off of their chariots. That's so true. And their wheels dug into the ground. Right. And then God blast the wind right. and here come the water closing back up yeah. and everybody drowned. Yeah. yeah and I guarantee you, uh-huh. if you go to Egypt, yeah. it's written in the book that oh. the king died. Oh, I believe that. Yeah. Just, we don't believe it, but it's written. Well, you go you go go deep sea diving, you might see some wheels <laughs> dug in the ground. <laughs> okay. Uh and I will say also Moses borrowed from God's pages. Yes. Because notice when there was another situation when God when God and Moses had to come to Jesus meeting and mm-hmm. he, and Moses told God, "If you if you wipe out all of us. Yes. They're they going to say. They're going to say. That you could. You brought them out here to just to, uh-huh. to destroy them. He, he, took, he took the page. God told, Moses told mm-hmm. God. Not only that, Moses said, you know what, God? If you're going to destroy them, wipe my name yeah. off, God. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Now, I don't know about you. Right. If I was God, uh-huh. I would ask Moses one question. What's that? Who told you? Who told you what? That your name was. Oh. In the- <laughs> <laughs> what book was you reading? <laughs> I ain't finished writing this book yet. <laughs> Your name, I haven't even wrote the forward yet. <laughs> Moses already in the end of the oh, chapter. How you know your name is in the book? <laughs> Who told you this last? That's, that's, a, man, that's a man of faith, man. Is, he is. knew that his name was already in God's he book. He did know. He did know. Wow. He figured if God's going to use me like this, my name got to be somewhere up in there. My name got to be mentioned in the book. It's, got, it's in there. Matter of fact, he, <clears throat> now it is said. That when Moses and God, and I know we're off the record now, that, but when good. Moses was on the cleft and he asked mm-hmm. God to show me, show me your beauty, show me your glory. Sure. That it is said that when God walked past Moses and moved his hand, that that's when Moses wrote the five five books. Yeah. Because <laughs> you know that man didn't know all that information. No, there's no way he knew all that. But when he saw the hinder part of God, yeah. wisdom came upon him. Man. And that man wrote about his own death. Sure did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I see in God's hand <laughs> yes. his, his uh, glutus <laughs> maximus. Boy, I tell you, it's amazing. Something. God is funny to me. Though. Yeah, he is. He He's is. hilarious. He created you. He I did. know he's funny. <laughs> he is hilarious. 
I think in Psalms he said he laughs. Yes. At the sinner. Yes. He had to crack it up. Yep. And he'll say he'll he'll laugh at your calamity. Yeah, your calamity. Which yeah. means he will mimic you. The same mm-hmm. way you said mm-hmm. is the same yep. way God yep. said. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, okay, go ahead, curse me. Go ahead. <laughs> you, you deny me. I'm just cracking it up. Because mm-hmm. he's going to have the last laugh. Yes, sir. He's um, the umpire. Yeah. Uh, so this is uh, 12 and 14. It came, let's see, and it came to pass that when Abraham was come to Egypt, and Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman, that she was very fair. Mm-hmm. The princes also of Pharaoh saw her and commended her before <laughs> Pharaoh. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> And the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house, and he entreated. Yes. Yeah, that's a good yeah, word right yes. there. He, mm. he, he treated her. Mm. To, Trick or treat. Yeah, they went to Olive Garden. Um, <laughs> and you know, they had olives back then. Yes. And they, they were in they, the garden. They, that's true. Come on now. This what is the Bible. Say? Read this your book. <laughs> <laughs> and he entreated Abram well for her sake. Mm-hmm. And he had sheep. And oxen mm-hmm. and he asses, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the men servants and maid servants and she asses and camels. So what were the she asses for? The she asses uh-huh. for the he asses. You got it. Yep. Come on now. I know what I'm reading. Mm-hmm. And the lords plagued Pharaoh. Mm. Uh oh. And, and his house. His house with great plagues. Great plagues because of Sarah's one woman. One. Yeah. One woman. One woman. Ain't that something? One woman called the whole king and his whole entire house to be pledged. Yeah, don't touch my woman. This mm. is God's woman. And Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this that thou hast done <laughs> unto me? <laughs> Why did that? I'm telling God, it's hilarious. Yes. Why didst thou not tell me that she was thy wife? Now, how did the man find out? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. How, how did he find out? Well, you know, when his son does this, the Bible says they were they were smooching. They were yeah yeah sport- no they, they were, were they were sporting. They were sporting. The Bible said they were sporting. Yeah, yeah. and mm-hmm. you don't sport your sister unless you just nasty. <laughs> That's just nasty. <laughs> That's just nasty, baby. It's just nasty. Okay, unless you south of the border over mm-hmm. by Jackson. Yeah, well, no, 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 well, no not- <laughs> <laughs> and live in a trailer. <laughs> And you drive nice car. What are you trying to say, Elder Rodney Jones? <laughs> we about to get shut down. FCC is coming up in here. Okay. <laughs> there goes my sponsorship. <laughs> 19 says, why says thou, she is my sister? So I might have taken her to me to wife. Now, therefore, behold thy wife. Take her. <laughs> Take her. Get her body here. <laughs> is he performing a wedding ceremony? <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Oh my goodness! And Pharaoh commended his eagerly. Mm-hmm. One commended, and the other one commanded. <laughs> Notice that, <laughs> right? Okay, uh, commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away and his wife uh-huh. and all and that, that he, he had. had. Now watch this. Uh-huh. Go ahead, chapter thirteen. Uh huh. And Abram went up out of Egypt, he mm-hmm. and his wife uh-huh. and all that he had, and lied with him into the south. Uh huh. And and Abram was very rich in now, cattle. Now, how did Abraham or yeah. Abram become very rich? He said something. He became rich right from Egypt. Sure did. Each time, yep. God's children mm-hmm. ended up in Egypt. That's right. They were pushed out rich. They sure were. Even the children of Israel, yep. even Abraham's other son, yep. who he was doing this. Well, I don't know. You may get into that, so I won't. I won't. I don't know if okay. you're going to go we'll into part. the other son. Yeah, we're going there. Or, or, uh, oh, to absolutely. Abel- Abimelech. Cool. When you go to Abimelech, the oh. twelfth chap- where the twin where? chapter. Sure. Why when not? we read when he said he was the sister. Sure. Because this happened again. That's right. <clears throat> so. It, it, what I'm saying is God is, he's triune. He's, he, he reigns. Yes. Uh, what he's sovereign. Yes. He knows how to put a plan together and he knows how to work the plan. Right. That's what sovereign is. He makes the plan. He works the plan and he knows the plan is foolproof. Go Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so here it is. This man, a famine takes place and I don't think a famine took place by accident. No, no. And then, uh, Abram ended up in Egypt. Right. He went to Egypt so he can get that money. He did. So he goes to Egypt, tells a half lie or half truth, uh-huh. but he told the truth of a situation. Here's a king gets ready. Now notice, Abram's wife went straight to the king's palace. Right. 
no, nowhere else. Yeah. Straight. She she was fine, brother. She oh, yeah. was fine. You she's, hear me? She's fair. That's why he kept. That's why he became a good friend of God. Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so he 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 gets that, and then the king puts them out and sends them out with great substance, yeah. and they left Egypt rich. Just amazing. That's why I call it the family affair. It's just it's again it's. We all we do always look at the curses of the families, okay? right? Generational yeah. curses, but we I wanted to focus a lot also on the the blessing, the blessings. of how my grandfather got this. And now I have it because of my grandfather. That's right. Um, it says here, and he went on his journeys from the south even uh, to Bethel, mm -hmm. uh, to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, uh, between Bethel and and Hei. Mm -hmm. All right, now that goes on and on. Uh, let's see if we can move even further here. Then, then God gives a promise to Abraham in, in verse 14. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, well, you know, uh, we've got to bring up Lot right quick before yeah, that. Yeah, verse 13. Chapter 13 is yeah, when Lot. I think we better bring that up. The, verse 7 is when yeah. the strife between the yeah. herdmen of Abram's cattle. The cattle and the herdmen. And, and then you, you, you hear something that takes place. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, uh, verse 8, and Abram said unto Lot, let there be no stripe. I love Abram. He's an uh, he's an honest oh, man. Oh my goodness, he, he's an honest man. Yes, just like me. I pray. <laughs> I love you Abram. You laugh I, I love Abram. Thou laughest. So uh -huh. let it be written. <laughs> between me and thee, and between my brother, my herdmen, and thy herdmen, for we be brethren, is not the whole land before thee. Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand then i will go to the left and lot lift up his eyes and beheld all the plain of jordan that it was well watered everywhere before the lord destroyed sodom and gomorrah even as he the garden of the lord like the land of egypt as thou comest unto zor um uh, no, no, no. go down to verse 14 so uh, Abram and, and Lot separated, right? Yeah, they did. Verse 14, And the Lord said unto Abram, After that Lot was separated from him, lift up thine eyes and look from the place where thou art, northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Then Abram removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar in the Lord. Notice he's always building an altar. He's always going into worship That's true. of the Lord. And then if you notice, at this point, when Lot and Abram separate, mm -hmm. then God steps in and give Abram more of his information. Yeah, he does. So it, it, what it tells me is there are times when God has to allow you or God allows you or God plans for you mm -hmm. and whoever else to go as a team to a certain point. Right. But when you get to that certain point, now God sometimes has to set up a fire mm -hmm. or struggle or something uncomfortable between the two people right. to cause them to have to go their separate ways. We have many pastors that are pastoring churches, very successful, and people right. are being blessed, but they were members of other churches, but something took place at that church, not necessarily sin or whatever, but something caused them to be uncomfortable mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where they left, and now they built and done works for the Lord. Yeah. So, uh, so Lot and Abram, uh, notice they didn't fall out. Their herdmen fell out. Their herdmen fell out, yes. See, so I believe that that's an act of God so that Lot can go one way and Abram go another way. Mm. All right? So we still get into later you'll find out why did Lot go with Abram. But at this point now, it's all about Abram and Lot will be on his own. So right at this point? At this point. So we haven't figured out why... Abram took Lot. Yeah, is that what you're saying? Right. Well, I we it's it's scriptural. I found out why. You gonna tell us? <laughs> you, you 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 the man. You tell me when you want me to tell us. I want you to tell us now because we're no. moving to the, the the boys in a minute. Okay. So if you look at something, when you go to the New Testament in the book of Matthew or Luke, when you're looking at genealogy, 
you find Lot in the genealogy. Right. And Lot and his daughter came together. Lot got drunk, all right? And the first daughter had a son, and Lot's son name was Moab, mm -hmm. which we call the Moabites, of which Ruth, Ruth was a Moabite. That's right. That's right. Ruth would marry, what the other guy's name is? Boaz. Yes. Boaz came from the harlot Rahab, all right? Mm -hmm. uh, Boaz, uh, 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 the harlot Rahab married Solomon. Solomon, which would be the Hebrew or the Jew, which would be Abraham, mm -hmm. and Ruth, which would be Lot. Right. Now we see Lot and Abraham coming together hundreds of years later. Mm -hmm. When the two of them come together, they give a child named Obed, I think his name is. Obed. And Obed gives birth to Jesse. Jesse right. gives birth to David. David, later down the line, gives birth to Jesus. Jesus is a product of both Lot and Abram. I see. So had Lot not come, then there would not be a roof. And if there was not a roof, Boaz would marry Ruth, and there would not be a Jesse and a David and a Jesus. That's good. So what I'm saying is God knows how to work this whole thing out. So he still calls it because Lot and Abram are still blood. They are. And it still becomes pure because when it gets way down the line, the two of their families come back together and Jesus is born. That's, that's a great way to put that around the corner and back. Mm -hmm. The uh, Even if he wasn't supposed to take Lot, mm -hmm. we always quote the scripture um, and, all things. And we know, yes. Okay. Uh huh. So that could be the situation as well. Mm hmm. Could be. Where he was supposed to take him, but God said, Because you took him, okay, here's how I'm going to bless this mess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because it appears to me, because you know the, the name Lot means veil. Mm -hmm. And Lot was really in the way. Mm hmm. After a while, he couldn't go on this journey with no, Abraham. No, he couldn't. God go had to separate them. That's it. So the veil was rent. Mm -hmm. Lot had to move out the way so that Abram can do what. Because then, because notice it says after Lot left, after, then God spoke. Then God spoke. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and and fourteen. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, southward, eastward, westward. You know, God is a direction. God. <laughs> you know, he, yes, he's he got this a great GPS. <laughs> um. Uh, 15, for all of the land which thou seest to thee will I give thee and to thy seed forever. Mm -hmm. That that Now, is this forever? Forever? Forever or, or is it a, is it a temporary of dispensation? Of that dispensation? Because we have to bring that out, Elder Jones. Yes. Because a lot of times what we do is we see words in Bibles and we right. try to we make, it make it definite. Genesis to Revelation. And that's, that's because we don't understand that. Like the word, there's the word world, there's the word mm -hmm. chaos, mm -hmm. and then there's the word aeon. Right. One would be the time period now as world, and other would be the world as in the moon, the stars, and all of that. True. Uh, then when you look at the word forever, like the law was established forever, but forever in that dispensation. Yeah. And, but it was established until the other dispensation, which would mean the time when Christ would come. Right. So that forever, I still believe that that is that it, it it is a forever forever. What tells me that is because there is a what do we call it again? Culture mm -hmm. that what they would do is if I promise you land, then I would have to go before the people of the city and the fathers and make a covenant with you, and then we will split an animal in half. And we will both walk through the animal and yes. we will say these words. If I break this covenant, may what I did to this animal take place with me mm -hmm. if I break it. Yes, sir. Remember when God made that promise to Abram, mm -hmm. he told Abram to go get an animal. Yes. Abram split that animal in half and God walked through it. Yeah, he did. Now, Abram didn't walk through it. No. God walked through it because God said, I'm going to seal this covenant because I'm the one who's the head of it. Yeah. I made the covenant, and I'm the only one that's able to break the covenant in the whole nine yards. Mm -mm -mm. So it was given to Abraham forever. Lord have mercy. Y'all need to part your food. <laughs> 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 yep. You want a covenant with the Lord? <laughs> part, part, part your food. food. Yeah, go on your fast. Yes, I just, oh, yeah, yeah, I just went there, man. <laughs> <coughs> I got a PayPal account. You guys go there. <laughs> yes. <coughs> Hook a brother up. But uh, chapter 14 <laughs> says, Abram rescues Lot. Yes. Okay. 
Can you sum that up without me having to read the 1900 chapters? Uh, uh, there was a there? war that took place where Lot was, and Lot was captured and everyone else, and, and Abram found out about it, and Abram took some men with him to war. He won the war, and he captured Lot and brought okay. him back. All right. Just as simple as that, people. Yes, sir. There's nothing. Uh, That's the Baptist in there. Yes, it is. Uh-huh. And as he closed. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then it says, Abram refuses reward. Mm-hmm. Okay. The king of Sodom went out to meet him after the return. All right. Now, y'all know that the whole tithing thing begins to pop up. Mm-hmm. Because Melchizedek's name pop up. Mm-hmm. Eventually. All right. Which is here. <clears throat> and Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the most high God. All right? God was high. <laughs> that's, that's your friend. What's his name? Uh, who's that? In, Cal- in Florida. Uh, well, South yeah. Beach. South, oh. Fields. Oh. Yeah, Fields. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> Miss Old Phil. Yeah. He's our Hebrew friend, by the way, y'all. Yes, yeah. And he blessed him and what said. What chapter you in, sir? <clears throat> 14 Mm -hmm. and chapter 14 and 19. And he blessed him and said, blessed be Abram of the most high God, uh, uh, possessor of heaven and earth and blessed be the most high God, which have delivered thine enemies into thy hands. And he gave him tithes of all. All right. Which is tithe is really is. It's a tenth. Okay. Now watch what he does with this tithe. Again, this ain't no tithe show. Please, dog, don't, don't be inboxing me. I'm awesome. Tithe again? Oh, my God. I'm so tired of this. Every Sunday. 13 days. Every 13. <laughs> okay. Because the reason why I'm bringing this up is because uh, people are not tithing. Uh, Lucia. Uh, uh, right. Well, they're not tithing. That's why they curse. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and God don't curse no more. But y'all put it back. Y'all say, you know what? God, the Catholic Church does this a lot. <laughs> well, we have we have decided. <laughs> For God, <laughs> that, that we no more pur- now babies can go to to heaven because mm-hmm. before they had to go to this purgatory place. Right, they had to pay. Yeah, to pay. Y'all. Okay, yeah. so the, the 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 Pope just mentioned something else last week uh, that stirred up the Catholic community. Mm. Now it's about conscience, and you know, mm. basically they, they they keep rewriting scripture. Right, right, right. Okay, all right. So people says now nah, I'm not tithing by Malachi anymore because I've, I'm realizing that's under the law. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to tithe by Abram the way Abraham did it. Mm-hmm. All right. So when you do that, now we're going to a situation of, is it a d- commandment or is it by choice? Gotcha. If you're going to do by Abraham. So mm-hmm. here's where it's found. Mm-hmm. But we had to find out what, what did Abraham do with the tithe? It says, and the king of Sodom said unto Abram, give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up mine hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the, the possessor of heavens and earth that I will not take from a thread even uh, to a shoe latchet, Mm -hmm. and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shalt say, I have made Abram rich. Smart man. Man, this is this this brother right here. Yes, sir. This sounds like the thorn in his side, Paul. Mm. Uh, Yeah, uh, save only that which the young men have eaten. (laughs) That sounds like a Jones. That's straight straight your father. (laughs) Uh, And the portion of the men which went with me, uh, Anner and Eskal and Mamre, uh, let them take their portion. Mm. All right. Now, notice what what Abram did was uh, he took the spoil of war, Mm -hmm. all of his spoil, 100% of his spoil. And what he did, he took 10% and gave it to Melchizedek, whoever uh-huh. this person is, a right. precarnate Christ. Right. Jesus. Uh-huh. All right? All right? Whom we believe that's what it is. Mm-hmm. The 90%, he said, I don't want it. He gave it away. Right. So we're gonna, if we're going to tithe by Abram, unfortunately, you got to get your paychecks. Right. You got to give 10 to to the Levite. So, so, uh-huh. And the 90%, you got to give it back to your boss. And then say, uh, I, God is going to bless me. Yep, my, yep. Because that's what Abram said. He sure did. So that you can't say that I made Abram rich. Yep. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Right. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's why I can't go to that subject no more. Mm-hmm. Curses <laughs> if I go to that subject one more again. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then uh, 15, God's promise. This is where you get to the land. Of children. Here goes the land. After these, uh, let's see, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in the vision, saying, Fear not, Abram. Mm-hmm. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go ch- childless? And the steward of my house is uh, this Eliezer of Damascus. 
you know, Damascus has been around a long time. Mm-hmm. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And uh, behold, the word of the, uh, the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not thine heir, uh, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels mm-hmm. shall be thine heir. Uh, and he brought forth... Uh, brought him forth abroad and said, look now towards heaven and tell the stars, tell the stars, if mm-hmm. thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord and he counted it. That's to where him. we get Romans from. Mm-hmm. Righteous. Uh, uh, Abram believed God and he imputed upon him as righteousness. Romans 4, I think it is. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. And if we do the same thing, he imputed upon us as righteousness. Mm-hmm. And it's so simple. All we have to do is believe God yeah. and he declares us righteous. Mm-mm-mm. Right on the spot. Right on the spot. Romans, the fourth chapter. Yes, sir. That, uh, let's see. Uh, it's called uh, Kashab. Ka. Ka. Shav, that is Kashav. Mm-hmm. That's in Strong's number 2803. Mm-hmm. To think, reckon, uh, put together, calculate, imagine, impute, make account, to lay one's thoughts together, to form a judgment, to devise, to plan, to produce something in mind, to invent. And it goes on and on. Mm-hmm. That's a wonderful word knowledge there. Uh, verse 7 says, And he uh, said unto him, I am the Lord. Uh, Capital, mm-hmm. all capitals. That brought no, the, but notice uh-huh. what notice what Abram is calling God in the chapter uh, in verse two. He's mm-hmm. calling him Lord God, all yeah. capital G O D. He sure is, Lord God and Lord. Though it's all God, it's mm-hmm. it, it bears its different definitions. Yes, one is a sovereign God. Mm-hmm. Abraham Abram called him Lord and God. Yes, you the sovereign one, and but God is addressing him as. The self-existent. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So they're talking some heavy stuff. Ooh, yeah. Not only that, but it, it didn't say right at this point. It kept saying the word of the Lord came unto him. Yes. Not at, at one while you find a conversation between Abram and God. Right. Here it's saying, and the word of the Lord came to him. Mm-hmm. So as if someone is bringing it to him, we don't, I don't know. Right. You know, I mean, I'm just going about how the king is writing it out. Oh, man, it's good. Mm-hmm. And, and he and he said, uh, Lord God, whereby uh, shall I know that I shall inherit it? Mm-hmm. And he said unto him, uh, take me and have a, a three years old. Here we go. And a she-goat of three years old mm-hmm. and a ram of three years old and a turtle dove of a young pigeon. Okay, I'm, we've got to figure out what this three years old stuff is going on. Mm-hmm. God is a numerologist. Yes, <laughs> okay? he is. And he took unto him all these and divided them into in the midst and laid each piece one against another, but the birds divided he not. I leave the birds alone, y'all. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, when the fowls came down upon the, the carcasses, Ab- Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, in horror of great darkness fell upon him. A horror, y'all. Mm-hmm. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. Here it is. And shall serve the, serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. Bam, there's the prophecy right there's there. The four, and he's talking about Egypt. Yes, he is. He's talking about Egypt. Not only that, but do you see where God is having Abram mm-hmm. to do a cultural thing? Yes, he is. That's what they do when they give the land up. Mm-hmm. They make an open statement. They bring an animal. They split the animal. They walk between the yes, animal sir. and all of that. And God is telling Abram, I'm going to give you one of your cultural things. And this is how you're going to know that what I'm about to do is for real and is forever. Oh, my God. Moses walks on the scene, of course. 400 years. And then it says, then also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge and after." Afterwards, uh, shall come they out come out with great with substance. great substance, uh, and uh, thou shalt go to the fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age, mm-hmm. but in the fourth generation they shall come hither again. Here's some very important mm-hmm. for the, the iniquity, iniquity of, of the, the Amorites, Amorites is, is not yet full. full. God is waiting on the Amorites' sins. To get up to the nostrils of God mm. before he makes his move. Uh-oh. In other words, they're going to build the house. Yes, sir. And when they through, God going to put them out and you're going to move in. And you ain't done nothing <laughs> but move in. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. We're going to come back with that one. He got to finish that part right after this news break that we got here. But I want to play a song here. This song here is by the Winans. 
I think it's from uh, Let My People Go Project. I'll figure it out. It's called Straighten My Life Out again. Y'all need to listen to this word because you think Abraham's family is all whacked out? Well, look at your family. <laughs> Go to the mirror and just look. Don't say nothing. Just look at yourself and say, Lord, straighten my life out again. The Wine Sir Robert Jones Show. Oh, no. Did you miss part of today's show? Well, just head to Spreaker.com. That is Spreaker, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. And type in the Sir Walter Jones Show to get today's episode and past ones. So do it now.
following show is paid programming and does not necessarily express the views and opinions of Urban Broadcast Media and its subsidiaries. Thank you for listening to UBM Praise. The Word of God is powerful, often misunderstood, but with proper study, you can gain accurate application of this potent source of life here on the Sir Walter Jones Show. you all say, yeah, Let's get the reports for Wednesday through Thursday, y'all. Oh, my goodness. That's yesterday. Today's news uh, from Mary Nikita for the Super Bowl Show. Payday loaners are going to hell. New research is suggesting that many Christians believe that those who provide payday loans with their three-digit interest rates are sinners. The LifeWay Research, a Nashville-based Christian group, surveyed 1,000 self-identifying Christians in 30 states with no regulations on payday lending. Barrett, uh, let's see, Barrett Duke, Vice President for Policy of the Southern Baptist Convention Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission, said that payday loans with their exorbitant interest rates operate far outside of what is ethical or biblical. Everybody say amen. Batting with a different purpose, former White Sox first base Adam LaRoche finally opened up about his decision to retire. Many believe uh, that he uh, left due to being angered about the resentment expressed by the establishment for bringing his son to work. Apparently, the decision goes deeper than that. Lerouk was uh, has uh, already made $70 million in his career. I'm in the wrong career. Thursday, April 14, 2016, Jesus, the Passover lamb. Hebrew Israelites around the world are celebrating the high feast day of the Passover. Beginning at sunset, the remembrance of the Old Testament exodus to the final sacrifice of Yahshua will be celebrated. That's Jesus, for those of you who know him as that name. Uh, the feast then leads to the seven-day observance of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Just a great ceremony. I wish I was there. Rainbow burned down. A Hillsboro, North Carolina a con- con- uh, let's see, a congregation says uh, they won't let vandalism stop them from supporting everyone in the community, including gays and lesbians. The gay and lesbian church led by Pastor Kennett was targeted as a symbolic rainbow flag adopted by the LGBT community was burned down outside that church. The gay pride flags are back outside uh, the Hillsboro United Church of Christ after a vandal attempted to get rid of them. World news is shakening uh, in uh, Japan. The strongest earthquake to strike Japan since 2011 shook a southern country late, late Thursday killing at least two people and leaving hundreds injured. Some were trapped in the debris of falling buildings. The quake, about 600 miles southwest of Tokyo, was calculated at a magnitude of a 7.0 by the Japanese Meteorologist Agency and at 6.2 by the U.S. Geological Survey. This day in religious history, 1906, the Azusa Street Revival. For uh, Let's see, Proto Mission out of which the modern Pentecostal movement spread worldwide, officially began when the services led by black evangelist William J. Seymour, of 36 years old, moved into the building at 312 Azusa Street in Los Angeles, California. In walked the Church of God in Christ. Mm-hmm. Made that spin right there in the news. From uh, Malikita for the Sir Walter Jones Show. You take the bad, you take them both, and there you have the facts of life, the facts of life. There's a time you gotta go and show you grow, and now you know about the facts of life, the facts of life.
Welcome back to the Soulbrothers Jones Show. I'm he. You just got there listening to Straighten My Life Out Again. That's the whining y'all from the Let My People Go Project 1985. Man, I was on my way to college. And uh, I'm still there, actually. I never, I never leave college. I wake up in my dorm room, my house. Uh, we in Genesis, y'all, we're talking about Abraham and his, his uh, well, his uh, very unusual situation with his wife, his her age, <laughs> his age, and a lot. His uh, nephew who decided to hang around Twin Cities, Sodom, Gomorrah, and, and there were two other cities. Sodom and Gomorrah was more like uh, those Twin Cities, like like uh, Minneapolis. Was it St. Paul? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, think a, and then, I think there's another two Twin Cities in the United States. Unless they're those, that's, what they're saying. that's the only one. I don't know. I don't know. Y'all hear me out on Facebook. Are there other Twin Cities? In the United States, other than those two. Okay, let's see where we are. Also, we also want to make sure that you guys uh, continue to pray for Annette Harris. You know, you guys know that her show is on Wednesdays at noon. Uh, she lost her father last week, and we want to uh, we plan to give him a nice going home uh, party tonight at the church in Posen, Illinois, at the Abounding Life Church of God in Christ. Meet us out there for those of you who are very familiar. With that area and that church, we're going to send him on right nicely. The man loved God. He loved his family. He loved his girls. Boy, did he love them girls. Spoiled girls. Spoiled as I don't know what. But uh, the Lord has uh, blessed them uh, to be a blessing to their father. Uh, so we're going to send him on. Pray for her family, the Harris family. And uh, not just the Harris, but all her sisters and their husbands and and children and you name it. Family keep getting hit, boy, with death. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You death know, ain't playing. Death ain't playing. Mm-hmm. I plan, I'm i planning a show about how to cope with death. Uh, I was listening to the radio on the way here, V103, and they were talking about that topic. I don't know mm-hmm. if they heard me say it on the air, but, you know, we just lost um, uh, the disc jockey. Mm-hmm. Um, what's his name? Doug Banks. Doug Banks. Doug, Doug we, just, Banks. we just lost Doug Banks um, on Monday, I think it was. He was uh, breathing like normal. Did the show Friday, signed off like usual. Monday morning, no Doug. Mm. So I think we're like vapors, everybody. Life is. That's what the Bible in the, in the book of James. We think that we have three score and 10. No. And a score is 20. Right. So many of us be like, okay, I'm 69. I got one more year to go. The mm. Lord promised me 70 years. No, he never no. promised you 70 years. No. James said, what is life but a vapor? You're here today and you're gone today. You're gone. So life is not promised. Nope. It is not. Mm-mm. I don't care how healthy you are. No. I mean, you can, you can, you're healthy enough to die. You are healthy enough to die. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as a man is born, he's, he's he, ready. He enters into death. Yeah. Yeah, he started well, dying. You know right what Job said, man that's born of a woman. Yeah. <laughs> it's oh, full of trouble. <laughs> See, if he was born of a man, it's different. It's different, right, yeah. right. But if exactly. he born of a woman, well, he oh, he was a God. male show. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he sure was a show. Job. <laughs> <laughs> that's what Job's problem was. He, he told his wife, woman, you sound you foolish. You sound like foolish. <laughs> Don't sound like my wife. Mm-mm. Work it out. Work it out. Uh, but in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Help us out, L. Jones! Mm, the sins of the Canaanites who were to be destroyed. Uh, because, see, God is so unique. God knows how to set up your house for you. For you. And you don't have to move, uh, do nothing to purchase it or anything. He will let someone else who's half-stepping with God, find the place, remodel it, build it up, make it perfect, and get behind, walk out on God, and God put them out right at a time where your life is just right with God. Wow. So God said to Mo, uh, Abram, uh, in the fourth generation, your people is going to come out, and then they're going to possess the land. Mm-hmm. Now, Remember, uh, he told Abram that he's going to give Abram Canaan forever. Yes. Then the Israelites is going to be in Canaan. There's going to be a famine that's going to take place in Canaan. They're going to leave Canaan and go to Egypt. Mm -hmm. 
They're going to be in Egypt for 430 years. Right. And then God is going to get glory out of the Egyptians or off the Egyptians. Right. The Egyptians is going to push them out of Egypt full of money, full of wealth, and they're going to go back to Canaan. Now Canaan will be called a land flowing with milk and honey. Mm-mm-mm. But it will, apparently was not called a land flowing with milk and honey when they had it before. Right. So now while they're gone, God is repairing. The, God is repairing it through the Amorites or the Canaanites. Lord, and then when their iniquities reaches the nostrils of God, then God says, "All right, it's time for Moses to be built. I mean, to be made. Moses is gonna, uh, the king is gonna declare it's time to kill up the firstborn or the the men child." He's going to have to be hidden yes, sir. and found by the king's wife, uh, daughter. And then Moses' mother is going to be put on welfare. Yeah. Right? right? Right. Because his mama gets paid to take care of him. Yes. Ain't that welfare? Yeah, that is welfare. I don't know how we think we, there's nothing new <laughs> under the sun. <laughs> so then, when all of this, then they get put out and go back to Canaan. Now Canaan is beautiful mm. and flowing. Mm. That's God. That's the plan of God. See, and that sounds like if when we all get a chance to go to Isaiah chapter 65, when God's telling the people, and I think we're included in this, you mm-hmm. know, you, you're going to, you, some, in some cases you can be, you're going to build houses and no one else will dwell, will live in those houses, but mm-hmm. you, you build it. Uh-huh. Uh, unlike today when, when the average person who buys a house, somebody had already lived there. Yeah. That's right. All right, that's average. That's right. That's All right. right. Unless you got the money to build from the ground up. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, but the day is going to come. Well, you you didn't have to build that. Uh, right now. You you. Uh, I was telling your your cousin Osmond. Mm-hmm. You don't you don't have to build. That's right. Somebody built that church for Somebody you. Somebody built it for you and made it just right for you. That's how King of Glory got it, where they are. King Glory Church of God of Christ. King Glory Church of God of Christ. Uh, the late Bishop Shepherd Little. Right. And and Deacon Willie Walker was driving past that church on 83rd while it was being built <laughs> for someone else. For someone else. And they drove up in there and they had a discussion. Tell them we'll give them this amount. And they were like, are you serious? Right. We're still building this wow. place. <laughs> are you, y'all got to be crazy. <laughs> then it says, no, this is what we want. The Lord told us to do it. Wow. Later, the people called them and said, you know what? This is what we'll do. The amount that you're offering us is not enough. So we will take that amount and we will pay mm. the other amount mm, mm, mm. for you to take this place. Mm. And then he became ownership while they were still building <laughs> King of Glory. <laughs> and that's why <laughs> the, the altar where it is, the back of the church where it is, right. it was temporarily stopped. That's wow. not where it was supposed to end. I ended. see, I see. And so they took the place. King of Glory moved up in there, and the other people never once had service in there. Ain't that something? That's what God will do for you. Yes. That's what he did for the children of Israel mm-hmm. through Egypt. Through Egypt. He used Egypt like a, like a ground. <laughs> a yes, sir. Killing a ground. stepping stone. Yeah, it's just amazing, okay, how he kept using, he kept using Israel. And that's, uh, Egypt, Egypt, that is. Mm-hmm. And that's why, you know, we get all caught up with our enemies. Get so caught up and afraid and yes. what they're going to do and saying all this stuff. And God is using the enemy. He said, when your ways pleases him, he'll yeah. make your enemies be at peace. And, and make him your footstool. Yes, <laughs> Your enemy will watch your house while you go to church. So sure will, man. I'm telling you, that's yes, so true. Yes, sir. I lived in, uh, uh, what's the where the Hispanics live on the north side up the street from mom. Um, mm-hmm. um, um, Humble. Humble Park. Humble Park. I live in Humble Park. Okay. Yes. All right. It's crime in Humble Park, by the way. Yes. All right. I lived up there with them, with the, with the. With the humble people. The humble people. <laughs> okay. And we're being very, very. Very, so, very so, humble. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> facetious. Very facetious. <laughs> okay. And it was not. It wasn't safe for me to walk them down this street. Right. Because I come home from church. Sometimes I have my collar on. What have you? I just look like I had money, and I just it was dangerous. Were you coming from Kojic? I was coming from Kojic. So I you know, know you didn't have so no you know money. You know I had no money because <laughs> no. Kojic had my money. You, that's right. Mm-hmm. I left with some money. You, right, right. To go to it. You know what I'm saying? To give up your money. But I, I was limping back. <laughs> come on, Cletus. <laughs> okay. So, so, but I said, you know what? I can use this. F- as a blessing, because mm-hmm. while I'm gone, you know, I had, I always got equipment. I always got musical equipment. Right. All right. And I know they know it, the equipment's in there because they saw me move it in there. Exactly. And they, they always watch. They always watching. Yeah. Right. I said, mm-hmm. I'm going to use it to my advantage. Mm-hmm. 
I started making friends with all my neighbors. Make friends with your enemies. You see what I'm saying? I went up and down the street. You see what I'm saying? Make friends with your enemies. You come saying? I made friends with them. I ain't know their language because they, they were Hispanics. Right, but, right. But, you know, and I, I, would, I would specifically wear a certain cloth mm-hmm. because most of those men were Catholics. And they respect the, uh, they they respect they, your cross and they respect your right. white collar. I would put the collar on. Class A. Yes, sir. They respect the Come on. But they respect Come, Man, man, I'm preaching this. Yes, sir. Now, I'll let you have this tonight when you teach your class. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. So I put my collar on. 1700 West. Uh-huh. <laughs> <Street>. Go ahead. <laughs> And because uh, I knew the people, now, you you kind of alluded to that earlier about knowing. Right. You got to know the, 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 people, the people, the culture, and everything. all right. Because mm-hmm. Abram, Abram knew the people for him to prophesy that mm-hmm. you fine, mm-hmm. and they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna take you, okay. and they're gonna kill me. They, you see what I'm saying? He knew it. So I knew my neighborhood. So I put the collar on. I would walk up and down the street, mm-hmm. and they would say, "Father, father, father." Mm-hmm. One one of my neighbors would say, "It was so hot that day. I remember. I'll never forget. It, it was like ninety degrees." Mm-hmm. And he said, hey, 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 father, come here. I said, yeah. He said, hey, t- tell your heavenly father <laughs> it's too hard. <laughs> hey, t- tell him, turn it down. I said, no problem. No problem. I, you know, I, I did whatever that they do, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, with the hands. Mm-hmm. I did the hand thing. Mm-hmm. I said, don't, don't worry, my son. Tomorrow this time. Tomorrow this time. And I kid you not, Rodney, I kid you not. Because it was that same night. I came back from church. Cause, you know, I'm COVID, so I was gone all day. <laughs> I came home. It, was, it dropped down about 70 degrees. Oh, yeah. Like, he said, he said, Father, come here, Father. Hey, tell your Father, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I said, no problem, my son. My son. My son. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, but, but check this out. Mm-hmm. As long as I was there. They watched pe- your house. People's houses were being broken in. Mm-hmm. Cops were coming by there uh, chasing thugs up and down the street. Mm-hmm. But my neighbor. Watched my house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't need a security system. That's right. They watched. My you house. had them. I had them. <laughs> when the man ways pleases God, Come the Bible on. say He make even His enemies be yes, at peace. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So yes. I lived. Remember in Egypt there was a famine. We're going to that guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, Joseph, Joseph pops up eventually. Mm-hmm. But notice what the Bible says. But while there was a famine in the land, the the people live in a land called Goshen. Goshen. And while they were in Goshen, all yeah. hell broke loose everywhere else. Yes. But in Goshen. But in Goshen. There was mm-hmm. plenty. <sighs> I wish I had time to go there. Mm. 16, verse, chapter 16, talks about the carnal plan for the children. Mm-hmm. Okay, L. Jones, no, we got to go to one of the sons now. Yes, sir. We did, we did Abram, but I think we got to go to Isaac. Because, you know, uh, Sarah's faith, faith is tested about the boy. Okay, he- help us out real quick. How do we How do we get to uh, Isaac now? Uh God had promised Abram that he would have a child. Mm-hmm. And so far, uh, Abram has no child. Sarah says to Abram, um, I have a handmaid. Why don't you go into my handmaid? Well, people don't understand that was still part of their culture. It sure was. If the wife could not bear a child, the handmaid would right. go in and and I believe when she gave birth, she would give birth in the lap of the wife, mm-hmm. so it would be equivalent to her. Sure. Something like that. Sure. Is this, isn't that where we get the surrogate mm-hmm. mothers from Sarah, Sarah mm-hmm. and Hagar, right? Yep. Yes, sir. So uh, everybody just holler. See, Abraham been wanting Sarah, uh, uh, Hagar all the time, or or they tried to help God. Well, you have to understand that their culture, mm-hmm. that was their culture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then a lot of times, Elder, we, when you don't know the plan of God fully, Right. You make moves not un- understanding yeah. God's plan. Yeah. It's not that you didn't have faith in God. Right. You just was not sure 100 percent. Right. It's like someone prophesied to you and tell you you're going to get a raise on your job. Some people will go in there and demand a raise. I want a raise in my job right now. Right. No, it may not be no. like that way. Right. It may be in a month or two, your supervisor may leave. Mm hmm. And then that position come available with the raise or something like that. So sometimes we not understanding the plan of God fully, sure. we would make moves not because of not understanding how. Absolutely. So now uh, uh, Abraham or Abram goes into uh, Hagar and then this child is born and she calls the, the child uh, Ishmael. Ishmael. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's read what um, uh, the, the Google gods say here. <laughs> Uh, Abram and Mishmael. <laughs> Abram and Sarah prospered. 
All right. Mm -hmm. uh, materially, uh, but had no children. Abram thought to leave his estate to a trusted servant. But God promised him a son and heir uh, when he was 86 years old. Uh, Sarah suggested and Abram agreed uh, that a pr practical way to have a child was through Sarah's servant, Hagar. Hagar conceived right away, and in time, Ishmael was born. This situation brought strife rather than happiness between Hagar and Sarah. Nevertheless, God saw Hagar suffering and promised that th though his, uh, this was not the child's promise to Abraham, he would n nevertheless make Ishmael's uh, descendants into a great nation as well. Mm -hmm. Why was there strife between uh, a, uh, Sarah and Hagar? Because Hagar started bragging. Yeah, she started walking around and, and what was her child, mm -hmm. and and it was nose in the air. Yeah, nose in the air. <clears throat> see what I did. Yeah, you know, it's it's a it's a battle between two women because of children. Sure. Yeah, yeah. and it, it, Sarah couldn't mm -hmm. do it. And at this point, it's it's interesting to me to know. That how did they know who was barren? How did they? What do you mean? How did how did Abram know, or how did Sarah know that she was barren, and yeah. not that Abraham That's was true. having a problem? <laughs> that is so true. Now, once Hagar got pregnant, we do know now mm -hmm. that the problem was not Abram, but the problem was Sarah. Yes. But how did Sarah know? Yes. You know. That's so true. Absolutely. And then they had a little party going on with Isaac or somebody or Ishmael, one of the two. I can't remember. Uh, you know, I know Bible, but sometimes my, my head be so clouded. <laughs> okay. Then the offering of Isaac. Mm -hmm. Okay. Something happened here mm -hmm. between God and, and God was testing Abraham. Yes. In the 22nd chapter of the yes. book of X of Genesis. Genesis, it came to pass that God did tempt Abram or test Abram or put Abram to the test to see if Abram would fully take out the command of God. Now, I know some of our TV programs show Abram going in a rage, all angry and all of that, but we don't even see no, that we never at see all. That. Nope. So, and, and what tells me that if you look in the book of Hebrew, uh -huh. uh, it tells us that Abram knew that God was able to raise Isaac back up from the grave uh -huh. if he offered it to him. So that tells you without a shadow of a doubt that Abram, without a shadow of a doubt, went forth to go take his son, sacrifice him. What was unique to me was his son, Ishmael, I mean, uh, Isaac said, Father, here's the fire right. <laughs> and here's the wood. You provide the fire. <laughs> Where's the sacrifice? I provide the sacrifice. And you know what the Lord showed me? Feel me. Heaven. <laughs> no. Oh. You know what he showed what me? Showed you? In our worship. There is the tambourine. There is the organ. Ooh, boy, you better preach. There is the drum. Ah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. we're still missing something in the worship. Something's missing. Where's the sacrifice in our worship today? Not the prosperity preacher. Oh man, I can't stand them oh, guys. Oh. Both of them. <laughs> <laughs> and T. <tea>. Yes. <laughs> okay. Wow. So, so is what what got me is, and I think at this time he I don't know if he was twelve, thirteen years old or something, uh -huh. but he knew. Enough to know something is missing in their worship because uh, sacrifices was their form of worship. That's right, that's right. Until this day right now, I know that there's something missing in our worship. It is something Something's missing. missing. And that's why we are giving, uh, I'm not talking about money. Right. Uh, we're giving the sacrifice mm -hmm. of praise and God is, inhabits the praise and, yes. you know, the rewards come after. But in a lot of our churches, there is no. Yeah, yeah. And the Bible said in, in the book of Hebrews, or I think it is, or James, when we offer up the sacrifice mm -hmm. of, 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 of our lips, mm -hmm. it is Jesus that brings the sacrifice to God. He has to. He's the only one qualified. He's the, he's the high priest. Right. So I think the problem is, and it's not him, we ain't giving him nothing to bring to God. Right. Because our sacrifices is not true. Yeah. That's something else, man. So you mean tell me the husband ain't the high priest? He's just the priest. He's just the priest. Jesus is the high priest. Jesus the is the high priest. He's the only high Y'all priest. Y'all was taught wrong. Oh, yeah. And his body, the Bible said, is the veil. Sure is. Mm. My Lord today. Well, Abraham, in Genesis 17, Almighty God changed Abram's name mm -hmm. to Abraham. Well, yeah. Uh, the, well, that's in chapter 17. So that's back, that back, back then. Mm -hmm. uh, for he would, for he would be a father of many nations. Not yeah. only that, not only did did Abram's name change, God changed his name too. God I mean, God's na here it is, chapter seventeen. Mm -hmm. And when Abram was ninety years old, and and nine, the Lord 
L-O-R-D, all capital, appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Yeah. Notice he went from Lord, now he's the Almighty God. Sure is. So there's a change right there. He goes from the self-existing one right. to the sovereign one. It sure is. Ooh, so is. he changes something before Abraham, sure. and then he changes Abraham. He goes into the L. Yes, sir. L L Young. L El Shaddai. Yes, sir. L L Young. Yes, sir. Oh, L. Oh goodness. Whew, I can't go there, man. Yes, sir. It's getting hot up in this. Yeah, piece. L L. Uh, mm. uh, L the barge. Uh, and so <laughs> L Cool J. Yeah. Huh? L, <laughs> yep. And his wife Sarah's name was strange. Sarah. Change. Change. So God is changing everything. He started changing everybody. He started changing everybody in in this man's family. Changed mm -hmm. him. Changed Sarah's name. Didn't change his son's name. Yes, sir. Uh, because he began to wrestle with something here. Mm -hmm. All right, that's just, we're going there. We're trying to go there mm -hmm. with the thirty minutes we got or less. Uh, Sarah dies. I uh, in, in chapter twenty three. Did she? Yeah, yeah. I she didn't did. even know she was sick. She was sick, man. Yeah. Ah! yeah. <laughs> Ain't nobody oh, tell me, me about nothing. it. When's the funeral? When's the funeral? <laughs> the funeral. The funeral. Uh, uh, let's see. I'm sorry, oh, y'all. My barber is here. My, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The deacon. The deacon. Deacon George Munder. <laughs> Jiggy Dort. George. Deacon George Munder. Give a shout out to your family right quick. Shout out to your family. Shout out, family. Okay. Oh, you better call her name. You better do something. Uh, my boo, Cynthia Munden. Mm. And my dad, uh, Deacon George Brown. And my mother, Iris Munden. Love you. All right. God bless you, my deacon <laughs> and my bishop voice. <laughs> my deacon and my bishop voice. And he's also my barber. Yeah, he is. Yes, sir. He does a good job. Uh, yeah, he and is. tomorrow's his birthday. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You'll be 19, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. All right. 19. Well, bless your heart. 34. 34. All right. You old enough to vote. He sure is. <laughs> He, 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 right. That's what they say. Vote often. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So, the, this chain game here. You got Noah, mm -hmm. <coughs> Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're talking about the family. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, on Sh uh, Shem's children is Elam, Asher, uh, the guy who made the, the fax machine, <laughs> our fax. Mm -hmm. Okay. L Lud and Aram. That's Shem's people. Mm -hmm. And you know. Uh, uh, Abraham come out of that family. Okay. Ham had four sons. Mm, I could use a piece. I sure name. can. Oh. And Jacob, oh, J I can taste it now. <laughs> Japheth had seven sons. Now us Negroes uh -huh, come from Ham. We come from that Ham. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ham was not cursed, no. but his Cush was cursed. Right. Okay. Because he or looked upon his Canaan. father's nakedness. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. So we come up under all of that stuff there. Okay. The problem is, they mm -hmm. say the curse was the blackness, and yeah. we are not black because of a curse. No, we're not black. We're cause black because we're beautiful. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? And yeah. other nationalities are black. Yes. All right, because again, I lived in Humble Park, and oh, they were sorry. blacker than me. Really? Yeah. I didn't think they get that black. Yeah, man, they they get, they get charcoal. Wow. They were blacker than me. I went to one of their, you know how to, black. you know they had a Mexican week right. thing. Yeah, every week. Okay, all right, all week long, where you mm -hmm. have to move out of town because you ain't no parking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. they know how to party though. They can party. We got a couple in my neighborhood, oh and my I love God. the music. The, I love it. I, I love playing the music. Yes, I play in church all the time. You don't even know y'all dancing to <laughs> my, my Mexican music. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. And uh, I went to their little the, the, uh, out there in the park, and there was so many black people out there. Oh, yeah. And I would all go up to them and say, hey, man, what you doing? And he said, how about this? Yeah, exactly. I said, oh, whoa. whoa. Yeah. How, how'd they, you learn they Spanish? They're black in skin, but they are. Yes. They are, Look yeah. at Brittany. Brittany is uh, Mexican. Really? Yes. Brittany. She's, Brittany's Mexican. Brittany Spears is Mexican. Mexican. But see how black she is. Okay. Um, and then, uh, <laughs> stop it. I just got that. So, Shem. The, under that came Canaan, different name, mm -hmm. different spelling. Mm -hmm. Daughter, then say I'm, I'm looking at the the tree here. Mm -hmm. Eber, I'm gonna go. I'm trying to get down to a familiar. Okay, uh, and then te, uh, Nahor we mentioned. Then Terah, mm -hmm. which was Abram's father, right? Right. And then uh, Sarah, mm -hmm. which is Terah's daughter. Daughter. Uh huh. Not by the same mama. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And Abram, Ham, Abraham, and then Hagar. Mm-hmm. All right. But they put Hagar under that same line. Mm -hmm. So Hagar was family. 
Most likely, he, probably. He, he, this, I'm looking at the, the tree here. Mm-hmm. Nasty thing. Yeah. Okay, and then and then so what happened was Abraham and Hagar came together. He was he did not say no to Sarah. Right. It's he, their custom. All right. It's their culture. He says, "I am. I will be pleased." <laughs> Much obliged. <laughs> Much obliged. I've been pleased twice. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then Ishmael came on the scene. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. And then Ishmael came the Ishmaelites. Yes. All right. And they own all our grocery stores. They own all of them. Mm-hmm. That's that's Habib and all his brothers. Mm-hmm. Okay. He pumps your gas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. They they know gas, Doc. They know gas. They know the science of gas. You hear me? <laughs> Oh, stop it. Yeah, all right. All they right. own it. And don't go in there and buy any of their chips because that's gas, too. <laughs> <laughs> and them hot dogs have been sitting there for 300 years. Okay. Then, then on Sarah, Sarah and Abraham finally got it together. Yes. All right. And then finally. And walked 25 years later. Yes, sir. So God promised Abram mm-hmm. a child. Yeah. Abram trusted God. And did not stagger according to the New Testament. Right. But he believed God. Mm-hmm. But Abram had to wait 25 years yes. before his son. Threw. Now, some people say, now the Bible says that in the New Testament, it said that the situation with Abram, Sarah, is an allegory. Sure. In other words, it's an acted out parable. Right. What took place. Mm-hmm. We say she tried to help God. No, all that was in the plan of God. Right. Because he told Abram, I'm going to give you a wife of Sarah, I mean, a child of Sarah also, mm. is what he said. Also. Right. Which means he gave Ishmael to uh, whatever, Hagar. Mm-hmm. And in the New Testament, Paul speaks about that whole situation. He says it's an allegory because one is the free. That's right. That's the, it. And one is the bond That's woman. it, Doc. That's it, man. Yes, you bring up some memories here. Yes, sir. Oh, my Lord, today. Talk to me, sir. I will next week. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now, Isaac, mm-hmm. okay, is Hayes. the child, all right? They, uh, Isaac Hayes, mm-hmm. Hayes um, <laughs> hooks up with Rebecca St. James, okay? <laughs> all right? Okay. Isaac and Rebecca gets together. Uh-huh. And, and then they have children, Esau and Jacob. Yes. Esau gives birth to the Edomites. The Edomites. Whom God said he hated. He hated. Now he said he said I hate Esau, but he really was talking about the Edomites. The Edomites, yes. Okay. And they were they refused to let Israel come through their land. Yes. Mm hmm. Sure did. So right now we're having this same fight over there. Yes. This is this, this is, is brothers and sisters. This is also over there is Ishmael and Isaac over there as well as Jacob and Esau mm-hmm. over there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now they were fighting in their mother's womb. Yeah, they were. Yes. One reached up, pulled yes. the other one down like crabs in the bucket. <laughs> and and then she asked God, well, if it's your will that I have a baby, what's going on? He said, two nations are fighting in your mm-hmm. womb. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine two brothers fighting? They're not mm-hmm. even born yet. They have no conscience. No conscience, yeah. yet they, they're having a fist fight. Yep. Yeah. That poor woman, I felt sorry for I her. felt so sorry. I would her. whoop the mess out of them as soon as they're well, born. No, no, I'm going to do it right in there. Just punch her stomach. <laughs> just punch, just punch. Right. Can you write? See, see a woman punching her stomach. Shut up, boy. Stop. <laughs> okay. They, they, only black women do that. <clears throat> okay, so Isaac and Re- Rebecca, they come together and then walked in Laban. Uh huh. Which is Rebecca's brother. The brother. Mm hmm. So, but when Jacob was born, he. Uh, Rebecca told Jacob, "Get up out of here." Get up out of because here. Rebecca set up this little thing, the little plot with the hair and the, yes. the porridge to deceive her husband. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. And she says, "Go to my brother." So deception is in Jacob's blood through his mother. Yes. His mother helped him be a deceiver, and yes. that is so unfair to the husband. Yes. That it it, it doesn't make a sense. Mm-hmm. Our mother never told us, no. "Hurry up before your daddy get home." No. If daddy said something, mama made mama, sure it was done. She co-signed it. And it made us have respect for both for of both our parents. Of them. That's right. If one parent says something different, mm-hmm. the kid going to win that mm-hmm. battle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Now, when I was married, 
if the if my children wanted something and I just wasn't sure, I'll say go ask, go ask your, mom. your mom. And that's the best way to that's do it. That's the best way to keep Both peace. Both parents need to sign their mm-hmm. signature. Mm-hmm. Now the kids are clever. Sometimes they are one step ahead of you. Oh yeah. They'll say, "Mama said yes." Yes. No, Mama didn't say. Yes. That's right. And then though the parent may not ask the other one. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Oh, no, so I, then I, I hear what you're saying, okay. but I can't see it. Really. <laughs> no, I'm from Thug Life, boy. <laughs> okay, so Laban. All right. Okay, then the Moabites come out of Haran, and the Ammonites come out of Haran. All right, that's mm-hmm. that's them them folks over there. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, Laban is part of Rachel's um, mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. but now next week, what I want to do though, I want to talk about children. Okay. Okay, and since we're doing this family affair, mm-hmm. I want we we talking about the patriarchs today, Abraham, yes, Isaac, sir. and Jacob. Mm-hmm. But next week, I want to get delve deeper into the children, which are the 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 uh, the All tribes, springs, the tribes. Uh-huh. All right, so we got we got when Jacob hooked up with his wife. Mm-hmm. Well, he went to go. He fell in love with Rachel. That's mm-hmm. the one he wanted. Right. He fell in love with her, but Laban made him work for her. He made him work for her. Okay, mm-hmm. seven and twenty-one years. Okay, he just kept working. Fourteen years. Yeah, and then what happened was, uh, he gave her, he gave Jacob Leah. Right, right. Because it was their custom. Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Now it must. Now, have he wasn't like his daddy. No, his daddy knew the custom of where he was going. <laughs> I believe Jacob most likely knew it. Sure. Because it was probably their custom. Yeah. Because he knew that the oldest had the birthrights. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's why his mama helped to deceive the dad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. And later you see that when Jacob goes to cross bless his grandchildren. You're entering into next or, week. Don't do yeah, this. Yeah, I got you. Don't it's do this. It's cliffhangers. Man, it's, it's called cliffhangers. Because you about to, you about to prophesy up, right here, man. I'm, I'm I, setting it up, dog. I can't take the glory cloud when you yeah. like, I can't take it. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> so so Leah. Uh, also, we talked about, we talked about hand, handmaids. Yes, because uh, there's a difference between a handmaid and a concubine. Yes. Okay, so Leah, Zilpa, and uh, Bilha, Bilha, they all came together. Yes. Who gave Jacob all his children? Yes, sir. Okay, the, the well, ra- right, uh, Rachel as well. Rachel, uh-huh. Okay, so and she was cross eyed. She, she, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she had a bad eye. Yeah, she did. About she it. did have a bad eye. Strange eye, wandering oh, oh, eye. I come know. on. Her eye and, left and came mm-hmm. back or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Something like that. One kept giving them children and says, this boy going to love me. One of the eyes? No, no. <laughs> one of the kids. No. Stop it. <laughs> don't do it. Okay. So <laughs> Leah kept having these, these babies for him. Mm-hmm. All right. Reuben was born. Simeon and Levi. We're going to talk about this next week. And those were the, and, and you look at mm-hmm. who was bet. Now, the Bible talked about. That God blessed her because of her condition. Yes. Because he didn't love her. So right. God took care of her. Yeah, he did. But you look at the sons that she gave birth to yep. versus the sons that everyone else gave birth to. She gave birth to Judah, Doc. Yes, sir. And who else? <sighs> well, you got you got Reuben, Simeon. 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 You got Levi. You know them. They the, are. the priests. Yes, sir. So she gave birth to the most important people. Yeah. Yet she was the one that was ugly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and she was the one who he hated. Yeah. But God blessed her. See, that goes to show us that when people hate you, mm-hmm. God will visit you and cause people to love you for who you are and what you got. Man. He'll make them turn around yes. and love you. Come on now. And she's the, she's the one that gave him his only daughter, Dinah. Yes, Dinah. Okay, and something happened to her. We talk about that yes, next sir. week. And then uh, Zilpah gave us gave him uh, Gad and Asher, mm. uh, and then Bilhah gave him Dan mm. and them Naphtali. The bad, them the bad ones. Them that Dan is the one who cut them women up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think it's Dan or Judah, one of the two. They cut that girl up and ate pieces, and you know, mm. just nasty. Just but they dog. say that they that the <clears throat> Antichrist is coming out of who? Well, well. And notice in that tribe, uh, okay, we got to talk about it next week, man, because we're digging deep into this, man, because somebody, yeah. somebody don't pop up at the end. Mm-hmm. They, they, they disappear. Okay. Because there are two other tribes that, that we don't see here. Mm-hmm. All right. Next week, mm-hmm. uh, Rachel gives us Joseph and Benjamin. Yes, sir. All right. Now, mm-hmm. she, she, has, she, has, she gives him this is the one he really loves, mm-hmm. but she only gives him two. Two. Too very powerful. Yes, sir. Because somebody comes out to try to bend him, y'all, who mm-hmm. we follow in Scripture quite a bit. Yes, sir. All right. And, and then Joseph did some things that preserved the entire, the entire tribe. 
through that whole Egypt thing again. Mm-hmm. So God Back used, yep. And Joseph, Yosef is uh, is a type, they say, mm-hmm. of, of Christ. Christ. Of course, what he did to, with his brothers, that's next week. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Not only that, yes. but what Judah said. Mm-hmm. When his brothers got ready to kill him, Judah yeah. said, don't do it. Yeah, sure did. Judah he, yep, they, they, became the one who preserved he him. He sure did. And Jesus came. Come on, man. From, where I we can, going? I can't, <laughs> I, can't, I can't do this with you, man. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. And uh, Rachel had Benjamin, and she died because of that. Mm-hmm. And she called him a certain name. That's mm-hmm. next week. Because mm-hmm. what she called him, Jacob said, you can't call him that. And here goes the whole thing about name. I'm going to listen to the show again so I can remember what I'm saying here. Because mm-hmm. here goes the whole thing about naming your children certain names. What's in the name? What's in the name? Oh, man, you just see. see. Now, I did that show, What's in the Name? Mm-hmm. But I'm going to spin it in a different way next week. Mm. This is good, man. All right. So with the about less than 15 minutes, we have 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Abraham, Jacob. Mm-hmm. Okay. Help us with. Help us with uh, some of the similarities with Isaac as Isaac, it pertains to Jacob and uh, Abram all had something in common. Mm-hmm. They married women that were barren. Right. So uh, there's that coffee tea. Wait a second. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Fresh part of waking up. Ah, it's gorgeous on your, your mind. cup. <laughs> <laughs> you did the NIV version? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so you look at something, and I ask the question, were they cursed? Because all three married women that were barren. Sure did. The father, the son, and the grandson. Right. And then the father, Abram, and the son, uh, whoever his next son was, Isaac, will both be going to a land where king loved women. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Abram told his father wife to say you're my sister sure did so that he can survive his son isaac i believe did the same thing he did tell the king you're my sister Mm -hmm. and it's the thing i love because the bible talks about that god shut up the womb of all the Mm -hmm. women in the land Mm -hmm. and when the king got ready to touch that man's wife the bible said god said if you touch him thou art but a dead man yep and he told, and God told him, "Now I'm going to make him pray for you." Yes, he's going to pray for you, and you're going to be delivered. <laughs> Man, that Not God. only that, but the, the the king says to God, "But God, I didn't touch the woman." He touch? says, yes, "Yes, I know. I know you did. I kept you from sin." Oh my lord! Look at that. That's a, that's a, a man. Preach that message. I kept you from. So See, he is the God that's he, able he, to keep. Oh us. yeah, he's 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 the one that's able to keep. Us. See, a lot of times we give ourselves the credit. Uh, well, at least I didn't. Yeah, you didn't because God kept you from it. Oh, there are many that. people, see, we don't know our final outcome. Uh-huh. So what God has to do is he has to preserve us from some things. Some, so yeah. he let you be born in that house rather than that other house. Uh. So he let you be born in this house yes, sir. so that he can preserve you for what you got to do in the future. Or he allowed you to get fired from that job so you can go take that other job That's right. so that you can be the manager. Mm. He preserved you. He kept you from sinning. He kept you from um, <laughs> You got angry when he didn't allow you to get that wife, but God kept you. There's some women who I used to date till this day. I see them and I thank God. Oh, my God. Yes. And I say he looked beyond my faults and saw my need. And saved my life from this wretched. (laughs) Because he loves you so much till he's willing not to give you some Mm -hmm. things you asked him for because he know the final outcome will mess you up. So God says, I kept you from sin. I don't know what to do with that. You spell my name Shambach. <laughs> R.W.? <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know what to do with that, man. Mm. I just I just don't want to know what to do with We're that. around here crying for what we ain't got. God said, I didn't give it to you because if I ever gave it to you, you'd have walked off and left mm-hmm, me. Mm-hmm. That's why he told Paul. Paul said to keep me from getting the big heads, yeah. God had to send a, a messenger of Satan to buffet me in the side. Mm. Paul knew it because Paul was always getting revelations and everything. He knew he would get beside himself. Many of us, if God allowed us to get that million dollars or whatever, we would get beside ourselves and we would walk off and we would quit. We would do what Jesus talked about, blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Yes, we would. If 
He allowed us to have everything we want. So sometimes God got to keep us from it. I can't let you have it because I know what you do with it. So, so you tell me he he pretty much knows what we're gonna do before we do. He knew it before you was born. Before God said, "Let the earth bring forth anything," God already knew our life. He knows every piece of hair on your head, even the stuff that you cut off and the stuff you bought. He knows how many times your heart beats from the time you were born until the time you die. He knows how many times you breathe in and exhale from the time you're born until the time you die. He knows how many wrinkles, how many scars, how many cuts, how many pieces of hair. In your nose, God knows everything about you, and there's no searching of His understanding. Yeah, but does He, does he know about the ravens? And the air oh, He knows. But he called. Matter of fact, He hiss for the flies. The Bible yeah. said, "I will hiss for the bees." Really? And the bees will come. In the Old Testament, He did yeah. hiss for them. Yeah, He did. And those men heard the sound, <laughs> and they thought it was war, and they ran. Remember? And then all those lepers was able to go in there and get all that stuff for days. Wow, so you mean tell me he know all the strands in my hair? Every bit of it. Even the stuff that you cut off, he know the stuff that you turn black. Really? With, with the Grecian for men. The Grecian for men. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not only a customer, <laughs> the owner, I'm also a client. <laughs> God knows everything. There's nothing that he does not know. <clears throat> Bruno Scott is on something, boys. She says so the tribe of Dan is erased, she's saying. <laughs> <laughs> Candy was cursed, not cushed. I mentioned that, uh, Bernie. Thank you. Uh, Angela says, "Preach, Ronnie Jones." See, this I, 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 I have to give him the last few minutes oh. to get it in because yeah, cause tonight I feel sorry for the church, seventeen hundred West Eighty Seventh Street. <laughs> Shameless plug. <laughs> yeah, you on a series tonight? Yes. Uh, tonight we're dealing with the ch- sixth chapter of Galatians. Where Galatians says, brethren, be not deceived, or be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever right. man soweth, that shall he also reap. But he said it in the sixth chapter of Galatians. Six and one says, brethren, if a man be overtaken in the fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one. Mm-hmm. Why would he put that verse in that chapter? Maybe it's not what we think it means. Mm-hmm. So what is the relationship between be not deceived, God is not mocked? have to do with if a brother be overtaken in a fault. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, that's good. I would love to deal with that on the show mm. about the restoration, forgiveness. Yes. Because when I put up the thing about Prophet Khan mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, and someone quoted that scripture, I said that our scripture only applies, to, first of all, if you want to look at the foundation, it only applies to those who are repentive. Yes. So I can't just give that restore to anybody because they right. fail. Right. They may not want not want to be restored. Exactly. They, they may not want to turn. Mm-hmm. So I can't. We can't just keep throwing that out there because we have a favorite prophet out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or a favorite scripture. Or a favorite scripture. Yeah. That's so true. And and one thing I do like about you though, you you um, challenge your your students mm-hmm. with scripture that they hear a lot. A lot. And they think they they the answer is a duh. Oh, that's right. that's a dumb question. Exactly. We know what this means. Right. That, and then what happens is I think you what you what do you do? You take them to Greek or something or what do you do? Well 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 <coughs> I, I allow each person an opportunity. <laughs> I allow the person. You're not even Spanish. <laughs> but you take them to Greek. <laughs> to the original language. Mm-hmm. But I allow each person mm-hmm. to express how express number one, their answer. Right. The purpose of it is to encourage personal biblical ahead, study. Yeah. Personal biblical. You will find some things out when you study on your own. Right. So it gives the person an opportunity to research the Bible and they find other things at the same time. Then they find out, like scripture that says, uh, the race is not given to the swift or the strong. You find out that that's not scripture. It no. says the race is not the race is not given mm-hmm. to the swift, but then it'll say neither, neither the battle to the strong. <laughs> yes, sir. But we'll write songs based off of that. So it causes them to read the scripture and find a fuller understanding. Then we all come together and everyone has an opportunity to express how they came up with the answer. Show us the scripture and then we go from there. Then when it's all done, we all together walk through the scriptures to find the answer. And that's effective Bible study. Yes, sir. That's the way it should be done so that the people could adhere to it. Here. They see it um, coming together with these same old uh, three Hebrew boys uh, <laughs> Bible studies. It drives me up the wall mm-hmm. All right, uh, to be able to dig deeper into scriptures so that people might be like the Berean 
yes. of uh, Acts, mm -hmm. who they, they saw it, they heard it. And they studied it. And they studied it for themselves. for themselves. And I think that's what you're doing. And you're challenging. Mm -hmm. Really, what you're doing is you're going against. The grain. Yes. And against what everybody. Their tradition. saying, tradition. You're going against their tradition. Was Paul crucified because of what he did? Was Paul reaping what he had sold? Yeah. And the answer was no. 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 My Lord today. Was his name changed to Paul? Yeah. And the answer was no. The answer is no. And I've heard scholars mm -hmm. say, yeah, then God changed his name. Right. No, he did not. He didn't change. Absolutely it. not. And uh, when the Bible said uh, that gifts and callings are without repentance, that's he not wasn't, everybody. that's not everybody. So we have these colloquial re phrases. We listen to other people. And yeah, we think we know. But and we the don't. question was, why did Jesus take the blood yeah. to heaven? Yes. Why did mm. he do that? Mm. And you go in the Old Testament, the high priest had to take the blood into the Holy of Holies mm -hmm. mm -hmm. to purify the people and to purify the temple yes, sir. or the holy place. Mm -hmm. When Jesus took his blood, he had to purify the holy place in heaven, which Lucifer had destroyed it. Man, we're going to go deep into that next week. We're talking about the children, the family, y'all. It's a family affair. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all his sharing. Sharing. Part two next week. El Ronnie Jones, thank you so much. Yes, sir. You're welcome. Yeah, I want to apologize to Barack Obama and Michelle Obama. We didn't get a chance to interview you today because El Jones is here. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we'll have to get you in tomorrow. <laughs> if we get a chance, because the great Michael Weatherspoon will be back tomorrow uh, at uh, 4 o'clock, and he will be, we want to be doing the book review, his book on musicianship. I want that book. That book is awesome, Doc. Man, it's, uh, it's a survival guide for all musicians. Y'all out here making all that money, playing for these churches, 10, 15, 20 years from now, you ain't going to have nothing because you ain't put nothing away. You ain't got no insurance. You ain't got, you, you, you got kids, but they, they, ain't, they don't know what's going on. <laughs> okay. So Michael Weatherspoon set it out in a book and he's going to help us out tomorrow. We're going to challenge him big time tomorrow. So be ready. All right. Uh, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay. And uh, thank you to V. Rogers. And Larry Jones and Alma Carter for sitting in for me on uh, day before yesterday. It was a great show. We're going to post it tonight, the Tuesday show. All right, y'all. I got to get out of here. This is the great Marvin Wine and singing the Sinner's Prayer. 2008, I think it's called Alone But Not Alone. So what the Jones Show. Oh, mama. Would you please, sir? Coming as I'm the time, no time. Oh, humbly I bow down. Hey, hey. I need your mercy to bow. This is my sinner's prayer, Lord. Ladies and gents, if you missed any of today's show, head to Spreaker.com and search the Sir Walter Jones Show and listen to this show and past shows. Now remember, search for the Sir Walter Jones Show on Spreaker.com. That's Spreaker spelled S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. And enjoy. 
You have been listening to the Sir Walter Jones Show, where Sir Walter Jones provides you with a biblical perspective on everyday life. Stay connected to Sir Walter Jones at his website, www.sirwalterjones.com. Search the Sir Walter Jones Show on Facebook or follow on Twitter at Sir Walter's Music. Until next time, thank you for listening to the Sir Walter Jones Show with Sir Walter Jones. Right, Mr. Walters. Mm.